we are here once again at Niagara Falls and we're gonna go down to the American Falls and beyond to the Horseshoe Falls because for the first time in I think 25 years I'm gonna be doing the Hornblower Cruise can't even say that the Hornblower Cruise down to the surface uh, actually going up to the falls themselves it used to be known as the Maid in the Mist it's still known as the Maid in the Mist on the other side of the river as per the American tour but today we're doing the Canadian tour which is now done by Niagara City Cruises now you can get your ticket in advance $32.75 online works out to about 40 bucks with tax there are kiosks here as well that you can purchase the tickets uh, either online well kind of semi online with your credit card uh, through an automated kiosk or you can go right up to a terminal desk there and get your tickets underneath the white sail don't go directly to the funicular over on the other side of uh, at the foot of Clifton Hill the actual ticket office and entrance is over here all right we're gonna go down the funicular to the surface to get onto the boat I'll give you a full experience of what the tour is about and then I'll give you a review of course on the way back it is time for a horn blower cruise here in Niagara Falls let's go This is as far as you can come without uh, having a ticket, which isn't actually a bad view of the falls down here. I'm also surprised to find out that uh, we don't actually use the funicular anymore, unfortunately, although it's still running, but that's not how we actually get, perhaps that is how we get back up, I don't really know. All I know is that we did come down through an elevator. I'm sure we'll be able to find out on the way back if we're allowed to use the funicular to get ourselves back up top, which would be nice. There are people with rain jackets in there, so I'm pretty sure that is the case, but we'll find out in a moment. Obligatory customary photo done in this tent behind us. I really don't like the whole souvenir photo setup uh, before an attraction, um, especially when you're doing it on your own. But I've got my pose for when that happens, so we'll see how it turns out. It's actually more impressive being on the shore down here. You get a bigger feel of what Niagara, or the feel of the area is all about. Hey, the funicular is running now. So we'll try to get on that later. On the other side you can see where you would board the Maid of the Mist. There's been no shortage of like a pre-show for this thing, so it's almost like you need a drink to... And we've got a concert going on. It's all happening here. Yeah, pretzels. It's all happening here. This is very... It's a somewhat temporary setup, however, so I'm not exactly sure what's happening here. 
So as mentioned, there is an elevator which we came through just on that side. And then there's of course the funicular. All leading you of course. It's a nice shot of the rainbow bridge and the unfortunate traffic that is up top. It's a Friday and the summer is here. the rain jacket collection point. We'll collect our jacket. And we will put it on as per the Niagara Tunnel, Niagara Tunnel experience. You need to put this on. Not because of the water, but because of the scent. It does not smell that great once you get over there. Our departure awaits. I'm going to try to get in this line now because uh, as you can see with the boat in the background, it gets pretty packed, so getting a good view, you want to get on there pretty early in order to get it. ship. I'm not so sure how long we wait because it's not that busy on here as compared to the one that just actually uh, disembarked or the passengers that disembarked. So I think we're going to be stood here for a bit before we actually go out. But uh, that's going to be it for me from this point because I got my, my thing on. Um, yeah, I'm just going to give you an idea what the tour is about and then go from there. Enjoy the tour and then we'll see you back at the dock once we finish casting off.
we make our way up the Niagara River, look to port, or the left side of the boat, where we will pass the American Falls. It can best be described as the American side of Niagara Falls, which in comparison is a smaller waterfall that lies far to the left of the Horseshoe Falls and is located between Prospect Point and Luna Island. According to scientific study and historical research, it has been concluded that the American Falls will eventually transform into a succession of descending rapids due to natural forces of erosion. The high flow rate of water causes the fall of large sections of bedrock from the American Falls which is composed of soft shale and limestone. Though the height of the American Falls is higher than the Canadian counterpart, no daredevil ever preferred to go over the American Falls. All stunts were performed from the Canadian Horseshoe Falls, which is more popular with its immense water flow rate and shape. The height of the American Falls stands at 180 feet or 56 meters high. Its crest line 1,075 feet or 328 meters wide. Its water flow 75,000 gallons or 8,800 liters per second. In a recent notable rockfall, in 1954, a large section broke off and fell near the end of Prospect Point. Next is Bridal Hill Falls. The smallest of the three waterfalls, it is located on the American side, just to the right of the American Falls, separated by Luna Island. Boat Island is much larger and separates the American and Bridal Hill Falls from the Canadian Horseshoe Falls. The height of Bridal Hill Falls is 181 feet or 55 meters and remains the smallest waterfall compared to its two counterparts. known as the Horseshoe Falls. As a natural wonder of the world, the Horseshoe Falls name derives from the crescent or horseshoe shape of the crest line, and the city of Niagara Falls in all its natural beauty. Geological studies and the history of Niagara Falls indicate that thousands of years ago, the falls were located 11 kilometers downriver from its current location. The erosion was a major issue associated with the Canadian Falls. The average rate of erosion for Niagara Falls was as much as one meter per year until the early 1950s. Since then, the water diversion channels and canals used for generating electricity have decreased the water flow, reducing the erosion of Niagara Falls and to this day of hydroelectric power. There are over 500 waterfalls in the world taller, but Niagara Falls is the biggest waterfall in the world for volume of water flowing at an average of 700 to 50,000 gallons per second. Niagara Falls' interesting facts include the white foam floating on the water is dissolved limestone and is created naturally due to the massive erosion forces of falling water. The height of the Canadian Falls is 170 feet or 52 meters. Witness the awesome natural beauty and power of Niagara Falls.
obviously. I hope my camera survives. And if you don't like, um, if you get seasick, you might not like this. You definitely feel the boat and the raft is underneath. As I'm amazed. You feel that. actually doesn't actually taste or smell that bad compared to when we were at Journey Behind the Falls. Yeah, I'm like, 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 yeah, I'm like,